Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and it is the beginning of a sunny week. We have been under clouds for probably six weeks now. We had 13 inches of rain in July and we've had rain the first couple of days in August and now the seven day forecast looks pretty amazing with the exception of maybe some storms on Saturday which is my family reunion. I'm taking you guys there with me. It's gonna be amazing. It's actually the 100 year um, anniversary of my family. So. Anyway, it's gonna be a great time, but this week I have so much to do. We have the CSA coming up, we have, which is my, my membership bouquets, and I also have the two storefronts that I am supplying flower, flowers for, and a couple of other small custom events and stuff like that that I'll be making flower arrangements for. So we are gonna be spending the day harvesting, and the first thing that that requires me to do is clean my buckets. Actually, my least favorite chore on the farm. <laughs> I hate cleaning buckets. And I'm actually running out of buckets. So I have um, my taller buckets, which I use for the zinnias and the snapdragons, and then I have a little bit of a shorter bucket, and I use this for maybe the flocks and stuff like that. Basil, I harvest my basil into these shorter buckets. Um, and then, um, that's kind of the same thing. Anyway, I have three, and then I have one of my giant pool buckets too that I'll be harvesting and it's got stems in it right now. Danger! Stems. So I use this at my bouquet bar. It was catching all the, well, it catches about 60%. The rest is a mess. Oops. I've got to dump that out into my compost bin that I have right out in front of the porch and then clean these buckets and then get to harvesting. Today, I'll be harvesting Zinnias, Gomfrina, Status, Rebecca, Snapdragons, Basil, some Cosmos, some uh, Chinese Forget-Me-Nots, some Gladiolas. I'm just looking around. Oh, some Salosia, some Amaranth. Um, what else do I, oh, um, some Winged Amobium. This is my first year growing Winged Amobium and it is probably my favorite thing right now on the farm. Also, my hens and chick poppies are hens and chicks now. I'm so excited. And then also I've got, oh, so remember a couple months ago in a video, my son and I planted Liatris gay feather? It's starting to bloom, so I'll also be harvesting some of that. So lots to get to, probably the biggest harvest I've ever had here on the farm. So let's get to it. So I'm starting here with my zinnias and I planted them in the rainbow, red to the pinks, to the oranges, to the yellows, to the greens, to the purples. To the window, to the wall. So we're good here, but I have so many to harvest and I also have a ton to deadhead. Now that means getting rid of any blooms that I can't use, whether it be bug damage or uh, maybe deformities from a bug like the tarnished plant bug, the nemesis but also maybe flowers that are too open. Maybe the bees got to them and they're completely pollinated and they're blown out and they won't last as long in the vase. So those ones I'm gonna toss to the side and then the good ones I'm gonna put in my bucket. I think I'm actually gonna post two videos um, on this harvest because people are asking me for longer versions of the harvest where it's not sped up. Um, and I know that's not for everyone, but some people like to watch the entire process. It's, it's kind of therapeutic and calming for them. So I think I'll post another video that is the entire harvest from start to finish, not sped up. <laughs> Probably be a couple of hours long. But anyway, some people are interested in seeing that, so I thought I would post that as well. So anyway, this version though is the sped up version. I don't know if you can see this. So this, can you see it? Can you, can you see it? This is an example of one that's going in the compost pile. It's missing a good number of petals and it's completely has its little baby babies out. Um, those little yellow stars. Um, that means the flower is on its way out and it's already kind of reached its peak and um, that's part of the compost pile. These ones aren't ready yet because their necks are wiggly. They do the wiggle test on the zinnias so these are not ready yet. 
I'm gonna go on the other side to do the rest. So I'm gonna go this side and then switch. See the difference? <laughs> Isn't this wild? This is a Benary, I believe it's coral or Benary salmon. And these are the Oklahoma corals and the Oklahoma salmons. They're so amazing though. The beautiful coloring. Um, they're so, like the sun's coming out so I gotta darken this video. But like once you get the true color on these, it's spectacular. I'll take a still shot so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Oh my God, check that one out. Check out this one. It doesn't even have a center. That is really cool. Should I bag this one and collect seeds? Oh my gosh, I think I will. Wait, but what if it doesn't get pollinated because there's no pollen? Too far gone, tossed. What you doing? He's got flarp. Oh, get out of here! Oh my god, get me! Get, get out of here. <laughs> Oh my god. either a seed or I'm guessing it was a little seedling um, got lost and hey I'm cutting it it's a usable stem that's funny okay on to the orange I have two buckets of pink coral red salmon that's a lot and I actually probably could get more if I spent a little more time but nope I'm gonna 
Start cutting ye orange. Oh, I love this one. Whoop, whoop, whoop. This is the Bonary Wine series. Some of these have the yellow, but I actually really like the wine with the yellow, so I'm gonna leave that in a couple of them. Like this is like the perfect stage to harvest, but it's okay if you get a little bit. Not ideal, but I like it. You also have to get used to bees landing on the flowers that you're harvesting. <laughs> Look at this guy's like, his legs are full. Look at you, thank you, good job. Okay, I'm gonna put these in my bucket now. I'm a huge white zinnia fan, but they get dirty really quickly, so it's tricky to harvest. Look at these cupcake zinnias. Oh my goodness, there are a few of them in here. Oh my gosh, this cupcake, man. <laughs> a lot of people said they don't like the cupcakes, but I really love them. The coolest. No, no, they like perfect for wedding work, I think. I don't do wedding work, though. Now this gonfrina is carmine and it's one of my favorites and I haven't been able to use it yet. The stems are just still a little immature. All the other varieties are ready with the exception of the white. So I'm still patiently waiting. I might clip a couple stems and see how it holds up, but if it's not ready, it's not ready. You kind of have to wait for the gonfrina stems to get a little woodier. If you wait too long to harvest gonfrina, it does this and you can see how the heads are just getting elongated and this is actually starting to make seed you can actually peel it apart don't put this in bouquets because that's these are seeds making babies <laughs> yeah you put that in a bouquet and it just starts to fall apart same thing with this with the purple one those are all gumfrina seeds. Well, there's a ton more. So I might collect seeds this year from these. Try it out. My blue and purple status is the last to flower. Um, it's just starting to put out some beautiful colors. is Muscaviosa patch and it's just starting to come on. I uh, usually would cut them a little before this stage but the scabs they're gorgeous. A uh, little bit more open than this I would cut. I can't even, it's so long. There's another one. Oh ooh, this plant's bending right over that's a problem. Might have to get some corralling over here. Very soon I'll be cutting a lot from here. And the Dusty Miller right behind me here, it's just not tall enough yet, I don't think. Not for wrapped bouquets anyway. They'd, probably, they'd be fine for like wedding work and corsages and uh, boutonnieres, but they're just not ready yet for, for uh, bouquet work. 
Now this is that winged amobium that I was talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of this. This is the proper stage. You're supposed to cut it before it opens up with the yellow. I'm excited about this. It reminds me of like basically, I don't know, like fairy sparkles. <laughs> I don't know, it's really cool. I really like it. It kind of grows like status where it throws uh, stems out from the bottom, m multiple stems. Ugh, they're beautiful. I love them. So these are the hens and chick poppies and they're called that because the pod looks like a hens and chick plant. Now, this is my first experience with these. First of all, they're falling all over the ground. They need to be netted. Um, second of all, they are not consistent with that production and I'll show you what I mean. So, kicking the tripod. So most of my pods look like that. That is a generic, regular pod. I'm telling you, most, most of them look like that. It's really normal, that's a normal poppy. But now, some of them are starting to make the hens and chicks and it's really cool. I feel like this millet, I don't know if that's too far gone or not. This is kind of the, maybe the best stage to harvest it. That's kind of what it looks like in all the pictures. I've never harvested this before, so let's try. I'll cut this and see what it does. But I definitely think that is more of the stage that you're looking for rather than that. But that looks too far gone to seed. Sounds like corn, for sure. I don't know, that's so cool. I'm loving it cutting all of it that looks like that. In the cornfield. It's kind of tricky to walk because I let the milkweed grow up in the laneways and they are covered in monarch butterfly caterpillars. So this is gonna kind of be like a, an unplanned butterfly release party down here very soon. ago if you saw the video my son and I we planted this liatris together I thought it only fitting if he got to cut the first one there are only a couple that are cutting stage I like to cut them when the tops are about a third of the way open I think uh, maybe this one buddy I'm gonna cut that one so take the scissors go nope all the way down like right here okay right there and you gotta hold the top hold the top otherwise it'll fall okay Thank you. <laughs> so pretty soon we'll have a whole lot of these to cut.
I got a bucket of basil, and guess what else is in here? Check it out, some dill. So I didn't end up planting dill this year because um, A, ran out of time, B, I had an allergic reaction to it last year. It gave me blisters all up and down my arms when I would harvest, but it reseeded itself from last year. It's over in the lilies, about, I would say about 10 feet away from where I planted it last year. And I guarantee you, if I didn't mow and uh, put this Bio 360 down, oh, so bright got so bright it would be all over the place in here if I didn't put down <laughs> the bio 360 anyway I got a bucket of basil which should be enough there's probably 40 stems in here um, that should be enough for the next couple of days and I picked a few stems of dill it's very cute love it Some of these are just starting to open up fully. Some of these actually, I, I got a few that are still half open in the bud and uh, ha 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 ha, they are gorgeous. Mm. So I have a ton of people asking me about my Lysianthus and here's some of it. This is actually the tallest of the bunch. This is the stuff that I started from seed. All of the plants ended up just getting thrown in in the back here of this row. Um, so I will have to wait and see. All the little markers that I had kind of uh, got flooded out. We've had so much rain. So anyway, this is the tall varieties and the, the row itself is really weedy. Like there's a lot of grass coming up through, but all the Lysianthus seems like it's forging ahead. So this is actually uh, like my first Lysianthus bloom, but it's super short. So this is only about eight inches tall. This is pigweed. Ah. Uh, lots of grass in here. I'm not so sure about this whole thing. This Bio 360 with uh, the Lysianthus is a pain in the butt. Um, so I don't know if it's going to get any taller. But some of the other ones are taller. But like I said, this is the short version. These are the plugs that I purchased. It's an orange. So we'll see how the rest do. So this is my first batch of Glads. And they're basically all junk. Uh, I would say 90% of them have pretty severe thrift damage. I did spray my Captain Jacks this morning, but let me show you what I'm talking about. So you can start to see where just it is brown and yucky. And I, you know what? I think it's a combination of like, this is wet. Like this is excessive moisture. So I'm not sure if it's, uh, well, I've definitely seen thrips on them. So I don't know if it's a combination of the excessive moisture, like that's rotten, that's rotten. So I honestly think the amount of rain that we've gotten is an issue. And also the thrips are just, they're here. I've seen them. I haven't seen a ton, but I've seen some. See, I don't see any bugs in here. There's one, there's a thrip right there. You probably, well, you're really blurry, but there is a thrip right there. Oh yeah, there's thrips. So while from a distance, the gladiolos look decent, uh, they're not. So that is a problem with this set over here. I have sprayed this morning. I sprayed Captain Jack's again. We'll see if it does anything for the new ones that are coming. But I do have to say, the good news is the gladiolas that I left in the ground over winter and came back, and which I'm in zone 4B, not supposed to happen, but I overwintered some in the ground as an experiment. They all came back. They're way over on the other side of the deer fence and they're blooming with zero issues. So it's just this area over here that has a thrips infestation and uh, we're just gonna try to combat it as best we can.
so bright. Snapdragons are kind of spent. Um, the second flush is coming, so all the side shoots are coming now. Uh, but the first one, like I could pick these, but they're just a little too far gone for what I like to sell. Tis my patch of asters, and you guys have been asking questions about the asters. So this is the center stem. This is the one that's ready. Go all the way down to the center. And this is basically the length of my stem right now. That's decent. And then all of these, like there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe ten side shoots that are gonna be usable and they all have a similar, if not the same, uh, length of stem. So super happy, lots of asters in here to pick. Lots of fun texture for the bouquets. I harvested this ageratum and this zucchini. Yes! Oh, put it back in my holster. Yeah. Uh oh. Sunflower successions. 18 blocks. Sunflower sieves are right there. So it'll be a while. The ones I'm gonna cut are right there. Now this is just lifting. This is fine to cut. This is actually a bicolor sunflower. I'm just trimming off all ye extra leafage. And I didn't really cut it that long because I'm just using it in my market bouquets. But, um, oh, there's a few more. They're not a lot. I've already harvested half of this and you'll see this is actually branching. I don't think it's supposed to, it's a pro cut, but sometimes it does that. So we'll see if the other ones give me any usable heads for the bouquets. I thought I would show you guys some of the flocks that I planted um, this Spring from bare root is blooming. This variety came to me labeled as Sherbert, Sherbet, however you want to say it. It's gorgeous, I love it. This one is Popeye. We have one, two, three, four, five of these in bloom. And then we have, I believe, the Danielle one next. Ah, let's see. My label's right here. Let's see. Yes, this one's Danielle. Actually, quite a few of these are in bloom. I've got Greek oregano, I've got bachelor buttons, I've got foxtail grass, I've got some phlox, some wild yarrow, and I've got some agrostemma, which is this marvelous little white little bips and bops in the bouquets. And I'm gonna go add these to my buckets and I think I'm done. It's, it's a long day. It's 3.30. It's been like six hours of harvesting with making lunch in the middle and stuff like that, but been a long day. Mom's been painting oh. the white. Look how good she looks. Look at you. You have white hair now. Uh, white highlights and 
Wait a yeah, you're pretty messy. And you have company though, because the chickens are keeping you company. Uh, one of them chickens has been watching every move I make. So they've so. been watching you? Yeah. I've been talking to them. I think they want their coop painted. Well, are you going to paint their coop? I asked. They, I didn't get much of an answer. So. Well, what color do they want? I don't know. Oh my god. I don't know, robin egg blue? Robin egg blue, get out of here. I don't know. I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten buckets. I could just keep cutting in a lot of places. Oh, I forgot to cut the flocks. I'll cut the flocks later when it gets a little cooler. Same with, I'll, I'm gonna wait a little bit. I just need a, I just need a break. I'm gonna break before I break. Anyway, I have so much to put together. I just got another custom order for four bouquets for tomorrow afternoon. So I have, I was gonna try to put together 10 for the Mercantile in Lauville and six for the um, store in Rome. So that's just 16 bouquets plus the four that I had the custom order for. for so tomorrow I need to make 20 bouquets. Actually more than that because I have my CSA. I'm delivering to my CSA on Wednesday. So that'll be upwards of 30 bouquets by the time Wednesday's over with. Um, which I can do it. I can do it with this, with these ingredients. I'll make that a separate video because um, this is a whole lot of um, clips to go through right now just with this. But I still have bells of Ireland. I still have some frosted explosion grass that I didn't cut. I didn't cut any Cosmo greenery either. And I have some more lilies that are coming. I had some lilies over here um, ready to go. Look at these rose lilies. This is like my final one. I'm. Uh, but that's cut anyway. I have more to go cut. They last forever and they're so fragrant. Delicious, but you have to warn your customers you can't have them with cats. So anyway, that's what I have right now. Um, you'll notice the basil looks sad. Look at this. This is what happens when you cut basil. By the time I get up tomorrow morning, or maybe even later tonight, this is gonna be look like it's brand new fresh and bouncing back but this is what happens this is why you have to cut basil a day ahead of time because it takes that long to hydrate and um, bounce back to life so looks dead promise you it won't be in the morning all right i'll be making those bouquets tomorrow and i'll probably turn the camera on for that too so it's bouquet making season and my mom's still painting paint the porch it is the project that never ends. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. She started painting it way back in May. <laughs> anyway, thanks for sticking around. What? The rain didn't help. The rain didn't help. She's blaming the rain. The rain in Spain falls mostly on the plain. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you soon. Now she's singing. She's singing show tunes. People, oh. People keep thinking that I went to school for theater. Ma, did you see that? Yeah. People thought I was a theater major? No, I'm not. Just grew up in a house that where that woman constantly was singing. That's it. That was my schooling. Anyway, bye.